part of this tutorial series on how to make a website um, is going to deal with the actual logo. Now, uh, the traditional way of doing this would be to create an image. Now, there's many ways you can do this. You can do an image that's just a JPEG that's not transparent. A PNG would be the next best choice, or the, the uh, good choice too, because PNGs are transparent and logos often have to have transparency. Um, but the way I want to show you how to do it is uh, with a logo vector. Now, if you um, don't have multiple colors in your logo uh, and it's just a vector, a logo vector is going to be the best making it into a font because it's going to be the smallest, your logo is going to look the most crisp, um, but it does require you to have a logo made in Illustrator. Um, so, luckily, I have my logo in Illustrator and I'm just going to use my Brodsky Designs logo for my business. And um, this is nice because it's, it's already done for me. Um, it's already made into a logo. And the idea is to put it in place of this. Now behind the scenes um, that I didn't record, I put together the first parts of the navigation. Now just to kind of inspect the element here, you can see that I added a new div called uh, with a class of main menu. And then I added some um, bootstrap like code in here with a row of three and then a, a row of, uh, or a column of three and a column of nine. So I have a 25% and then 75% right here. And the logo is planning to go here. Um, so the first step would be to upload my logo. Um, now, um, what's cool about this is that they actually do have a way for you to upload logos. You just go over here and you upload them. Um, now this upload feature is used either to upload their own like JSON file that allows you to upload past icons that you've made within here, or the other use and the more important for today is to upload an SVG. So let's go over to um, our Illustrator and we're going to make this logo into an SVG. The first thing to do with an SVG is to make sure that you don't have any um, lines now or any other colors. You just want a single color because fonts can really only be one color. If you need them to be two colors, you're actually going to have to make two different icons and then color each one of them differently. Or you can be creative and maybe use a CSS gradient, stuff like that. But for now, this is already formatted nicely. The vector is already done perfectly. And I don't have to worry about making sure that there's no uh, white in here already. That could cause issues, just a fair warning. So the first thing we do is we go to document setup. And we go to edit artboards. We can just edit the artboard that's right in here. And uh, Illustrator actually will click right to your logo. Now, uh, with um, Isomoon does recommend to do an, uh, a grid, so like a 16 uh, pixel grid kind of thing. Um, th in this case, I don't think the grid really matters since uh, your icon is only going to be used for this website, but um, it is uh, something to say that Isomoon does recommend to use a grid. And you guys can look into that on, on your spare time. Um, and we're just going to go over here. We made our uh, art space or our, uh, little space. So um, now what we have to do is we want to save as. So file, save as. I always use the shortcut. Um, but we can do a file, save as. And the default is AI. Um, we want to change that to SVG. And I'm going to call this Brodsky Designs logo. Uh, I'm actually going to call it something else. Hmm. 
make sure you hit OK. And you can check in your finder to make sure that you actually did save it. You can actually open it up. And you can see that it's actually transparent, just barely, which is great. Now, um, if you already have a subset, like a custom subset, you can actually upload straight through here. Or you can just make a new subset by uploading like this. Now we can customize this subset. And I'm going to name it my custom icons. And it already changes. That's great. Now we want to make sure we add it to our icon set. Now let's go to our font. And now we want to customize exactly what this is. So let's call this just logo. That's really what it is. And what we're going to do is we can download it. And um, just like as before, And we're going to upload this straight to uh, Coda. And we're going to replace the current files. And what this does is it overwrites what we currently have. Um, luckily, like these things will still be the same. So if we did it correctly, these icons should still work. But now what we want to do is we want to go in here and where our logo is loaded or where our logo is going to be, we're going to call this icon logo because that's what we called it. And you can see the logo now comes up. Um, now, uh, what I usually like to do for um, this is I like to give it its own ID. And I'm going to call this logo. And uh, this is actually a good opportunity to explain the difference between IDs and classes. Um, so IDs are kind of like, uh, like if you're, if you're saying like a person, an ID would be like their social security number. No two people can have the same social security number. And a class would be kind of like maybe their religion, uh, their gender, uh, whatever they might be. And lots of people can have the same class. Now, in this case, um, there can only be one element on the entire page that's called logo. Whereas there might be many different uh, classes that have icon logo. What if we want to reuse the logo somewhere else on the page, like the footer or something? then we can use the same class again, and that'd be totally fine. But we'd never want to use the ID logo again. Now, the way you call logos is a little bit different in CSS as well. And you just do uh, pound sign and logo. Now, to customize the color of this, we can just do something like this. You can see that it's red. It's exactly the same as how we did it before when editing icons. And I'm actually going to keep it black by default. And I'm going to just increase the text size to be, I don't know, 50. Let's see how that looks. And yeah, that looks pretty decent. So we can uh, maybe uh, make it a little bit bigger. And that is how you add a custom logo as a font. Now, the real advantage of this, uh, and I said this before, really um, is that you can make these as big as you want. Say I make it like 600, you can see it never gets pixelated. Um, and that's just really nice. So every once in a while, maybe your vector is uh, sized 
little difference. You're gonna notice all your flaws um, when you do that. Um, but considering like your logos may be done correctly, uh, you're not gonna ever get pixelated because it is a vector, which is really, really a plus and will make your website really look high quality, uh, really right out of the right out of the box. And that's always nice. Um, and altering this, if you never need to change the logo, maybe a hover over effect, uh, or change the color of the logo, um, it's really easy to do. So you have a lot of advantages by using your logo as a, as a font icon. Uh, well, that concludes uh, this tutorial on um, how to use, uh, how to make a custom icon. And um, I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye.